So Zoo Talk here with Sue and Charles. Charles, we have made it to Terengary National Park. Finally! I know. <laughs> I feel like it's been a decade for us, Sue, to yeah. finally make it out here. We are in your backyard. It is beyond amazing. The landscape behind us is beautiful. Um, driving in, we got to see a lot of animals. Sue, I asked you in Tucson, what did you really want to see? You said elephants. elephants. We saw them. We saw them. We got in the park and they were there. It was as though Charles had arranged for about 30 of them to just come and greet us. I mean, they stepped across the road. They were all around our Jeeps. Um, it was, I was as close to a wild elephant as we get to the elephants at our zoo. And remarkable. And Charles, we had elephants of all different ages. Um, and I mean, that's pretty common for them. Just all hang out together. Absolutely. Over here. So you'll have the family group. And so you'll have adult females, different ages, some um, maybe in their sort of 40s, perhaps even 50s, then in the 30s, then in the 20s, and then all their little ones. And as you saw, the, the interval between births is really narrow. You've got lots and lots of little infants over here. And so you'll have the sort of 10-year-olds, uh, the eights, the sevens, right down to ones who were just born a few months ago. So, and I think you saw some of those really uh, newborns, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think one of them still had the fuzzy hair on it. It did. I mean, the, what was so amazing is the grass was so high and we would look at the elephants and watch and watch and then these little fuzzy heads would appear like you know and a, and a little tiny trunk would come up and you would keep watching and then finally you get to see the little babies i mean it was just you could drive right by and not notice them if you weren't if you right. didn't take the time yeah right now now charles you said four thousand elephants um come in and out of this area throughout the year um we don't have all of them here right now uh what, what's going on with that so what happens in this national park is that during the dry season, um, all of this that you see behind you dries out and um, the, pretty much the only water in the ecosystem is in the Tarangiri River. And so all the animals concentrate over here in the park. Well, when it rains, there's water all over the place and the soil outside the national park is um, has a much higher mineral and nutrient content than soil inside the park. So all the animals move outside the park. And so as a result, um, Probably there's probably a couple of thousand elephants outside the park at the moment on community lands, as well as all the zebra, the wildebeest, and other animals as well. So we saw, I mean, we saw some of them. You said those are mostly like the community ones that kind of stay in Terengary. They might go out a little bit. Um, and the grasses, I mean, they've got great food because of the water that's out there. So it'll take a little bit for them to come in. Um, we did see some other wildlife, Sue, um, and we got to see a lion and a lion hunt. We did. We did. We saw about 10 lions and again, a variety of ages and there were warthogs in the area. And so the female lioness left the group that had different aged lions and stalked closer to the warthog. And we all held our breath and we were very quiet watching. And we could see the warthog get a little bit alarmed, a little bit knew maybe something was up. And it dashed off and she did a half-hearted chase <laughs> and then they were behind the vegetation but we didn't hear anything so we assumed that the warthog survived another day. Okay so now tell me who were you rooting for? Oh, the lion was, or the warthog? It was hard, oh, it was hard <laughs> but the fascinating thing was the family of lions they were rooting for her so they all moved close but stayed quiet and put and let the lioness lead the charge which was so fascinating that they knew to be still and give her that chance and then they were right there if she was successful. Yeah, the youngsters were, were sitting up on the little rock here. They were looking over and seeing where she yeah. was going. And I mean, that one just came around. I mean, it, it, yeah. was, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, not a kill that time, but still really cool to be able to see. Um, and we've seen some other animals. We should ask Jed. Did you see the pangolin? I have not seen a pangolin. <laughs> uh, so back in Good. Tucson, Good. Uh, we, we said that I really want to see a pangolin because Charles, who's uh, been out here for 30 years, has never seen one. They're supposedly out here, but we have not yet. Search is still on, so we'll keep you guys posted. Um, and we just want to thank you guys for uh, you know staying tuned with all this. And one of the uh, viewers, Sue, was saying that we didn't cover enough birds in oh. Arusha National Park. Um, we've seen a lot of birds. We sure have. I mean, the most beautiful ones were the lilac breasted rollers. They were flitting around everywhere. We've mm -hmm. even seen lovebirds, which I didn't imagine we would get that opportunity. And they're so chatty and noisy that often you hear them long before you see them. So that was kind of fun for us. Yeah. And some different kinds of eagles. Tawny eagle. That Marshall was eagle, yeah. which is the largest eagle, right? Uh, second largest. Yeah, second but largest. Lar largest in the savanna. Yes, okay. the crowned eagle that you'd get in the original national parks, a bit la uh, larger, that feeds on monkeys. But yes, you get a uh, And wide, did you see array. any of your favorite birds? What was the best bird you saw today? Best bird I saw today. Oof. Okay. 
Um, Marshall Eagle has to be it. I okay, think they're, yeah. so they're pretty powerful magnificent. animals. Yeah, they really quite something. <laughs> yeah. My favorite was the crown cranes. Uh, we oh, came, they we were came, we came well. across, and um, we had two crown cranes, most likely a mated pair. Um, mm -hmm. They were up on top of this tree and just looking out. I mean, yeah. it was it was really cool to be able to see them um, in that in that space. Uh, Charles, is it? normal to have this many birds here year round or is it because of the tall grass that they come in to eat the bugs? So what's happened at the moment? So um, normally you'd expect to get short rains at this time of the year and the birds that we saw today would be fairly typical of what you'd expect to see in Tarangiri at this time but this has been an exceptional year for rains. So normally it would rain and start raining in November, rain through December a little bit and then it would stop and so there, there'd be some green grass now but not very much. Instead what's happened is that it started raining in October and it hasn't yeah. stopped. Yeah. Okay. And there's big puddles all over the place, and the grass is tall, and there's a the huge amount of water flowing through the river. The river should be dry at the moment. Yeah. So things have changed dramatically this year. A lot more bugs and um, many birds coming through and feeding those bugs. And I imagine you'll start seeing birds that typically you'd only associate with the wet season fairly soon. Yeah. You were talking about the river and how there's so much that it's dropped some of the embankment and it's changed the topography of the landscape and what it's done is separated so if there's elephants or giraffe on one side they can't get across now. Right, absolutely. So there might be elephant groups split one on one side of the river and one on the other and there is really they'd have to walk for maybe it's like 50 miles in order to get to a place where they can actually get around the river. So yes it's uh, you know that's fairly striking. Yeah, I mean, the vastness of this place, Sue, is absolutely amazing. Um, it's beyond what pictures can say. Uh, it's it's beyond what I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's really a picturesque, great baobab trees, um, just just a really beautiful place. Uh, and I can see how it can sustain uh, 4,000 elephants coming in. Yeah, and what's amazing, Jed, is, you know, when you go to our expedition Tanzania at Reed Park Zoo, a lot of the photographs that Dr. Foley has sent us over the years for our um, for our signs, I, I wondered how true to life they would be. And it's amazing that the brilliant colors and the abundant wildlife, it's, it's like those pictures, but in real life. Now, Sue was talking about our zoo. We have our five uh, elephants, our herd. Did you see similar behavior here that you would see with our elephants? Yeah, that was the most exciting. I mean, we saw um, young elephants, playing together, so rumping the, wrapping their trunks and pushing on one another. Um, the little tiny baby nursing, that was pretty special. And then also just with the long grass, the elephants grabbing the grass and then sort of smacking it around to get the dirt off and mm -hmm. then and mm -hmm. eating it. It was just, it was, it was really fun. It's great to be able to see those similarities mm -hmm. and that we're able to uh, give the community of Tucson um, that maybe can't make it out to Tarangiri, this amazing experience um, with our herd of elephants as great ambassadors to this here. So um, really cool stuff. Yeah, so we saw um, a small group of male elephants and there was a very, very large one and a smaller guy in that group as well. And the, the smaller male was very aware of what the larger male was doing. And in fact, we saw him glance back and he glanced so far back, you could see the white of his eyes. And it reminded me of our herd that occasionally the youngsters will be keeping an eye on, you know, is, are one of the other elephants gonna chase them off from their favorite food? And so they had that same big eyed look. Yeah, I mean, Charles, thank you so much for um, all the work that you've done here to be able to, you know, protect the elephants, uh, protect corridors. This is an amazing place. Uh, we're so glad that you were able to make it out when we got out here. Uh, it's really been a treat. So um, just a, a huge thanks to all the work that you have done over the last 30 years uh, to preserve this beautiful place. Yeah, well, it's, I'm so glad you finally made it out. And, and that's the thing. As you say, I, I can talk about these places and say how wonderful they are and how beautiful, etc. But it's not until you actually come out here and you see it and you smell it and you breathe it and you see the animals, etc., that you really actually get to understand it and say, okay, yes, I, you know, I really get it. I, I get why the animals are special. I get why the place is special, etc. So I always try and encourage as many people as possibly can to come out and mm -hmm. visit, and even if you can't visit Tanzania, to visit you know some other parts of, of Africa perhaps, and and really get to appreciate the wilderness. Absolutely amazing. Sue, this is our last day in Tarangiri. We yeah. head off to Ngorongora Crater. Uh, so we want to just thank everybody for staying tuned. Um, we're going to kind of wrap this up and then hopefully we'll see you guys in Ngorongora Crater. <laughs>